Hello, grab your keys and reusable cloth bags because we're going to the 35th annual Vermont Sheep and Wool Festival. Nestled among the green hills of Turnbridge, Vermont, each year for two days in late September to early October, shepherds and fiber artists unite celebrating our local heritage. This year, the festival hosts a wide array of classes, demos, and other fun events. So wear your comfiest shoes, don your latest creations, and let's get going. The drive was pretty easy. The leaves are just starting to change and that made for a beautiful drive. Pulling off the 110 into the fairgrounds was fairly simple. Parking was a breeze. Even though it's fall, it's so hot. The skies are clear and the sun is bright. Luckily, there's plenty of shade in the pavilion, as well as places to sit and chill out for a bit while enjoying a local band. Also, full disclosure, I'm not sponsored by anyone, and I add the link in my description to the event, which links to all the vendors, farms, and nonprofits I'll be mentioning. So hopefully it'll both be YouTube rules friendly and viewer accessible friendly. So getting into it, the first stop we walked up to is building number nine on the map, the Animal Barn. Here we have a pair of beautiful Gotland sheep ready to give a kiss. I love their color and beautiful ringlets. The breeder handed me her business card and I'm just like, girl, don't tempt me. She was very sweet. Right next to the Gotlands are these Finn sheep babies. So cute. I love their names too. Edamame and chickpea. Two of my favorite snacks. <laughs> Walking through the animal barn, there are so many booths. Beautifully tarred yarn, knit hats, mittens, and choice selections in local jams, chutneys, as well as pelts, fleeces, and sustainably grown, ethnically raised sheep meat products. The breeders were so kind and more than eager to share their love of their breed. I love the profile of this angora goat. I don't see dish noses too often at home. Look at these cute bunnies. Have you ever seen a brown angora before? I haven't. Ping-ponging around the barn, there are Shetlands, I love their color, and my extroverted companion found out that the farm, Wings in the Prayer, holding an open farm event next weekend. It sounds fun! Next to the Shetlands were the Icelandics. Look how cute they are! These fin sheep really love a good scritching. Here are some cute codswalls hamming up the camera, and the super shy club for sheep. No fiber festival is complete without black nose valets. I've heard people compare them to Wooloos, but I thought Wooloos are more clean-faced. How about you? Which sheep look most like Pokemon? There were breeder stock for sale, weathers, and some rescues in need of a forever home. Directly outside the rear of the animal barn is the animal barn tent. Number five on the map, there are various talks throughout the weekend, from question and answering, breed introductions, as well as discussions highlighting the challenges and solutions fiber lovers might face in pursuing their dream farm. Hopping on over to the open air vendor area, number six on the map, we bumped into the Vermont Sheep and Goat Association. It was really nice having a good chat about marketing sheep and wool products. We also discussed different resources smaller fiber farmers can utilize that would help them with alleviate some of the pressure from wearing so many hats, as they say. There's only so much time in the day, and many heritage breed sheep farmers maintain a small flock while working a day job, which has its own unique challenges. So if you're looking for some much needed sheepy support, I really recommend checking them out. Speaking of sheepy support, there are also a couple local fiber mills and a local tannery that I've been eyeing for a while. It really makes a difference to meet these small businesses and get a feel for them. And oh look, more bunnies! There's so much to see. Lots of excellent selection in yarns, roving, and bats. I'm looking for my favorite dye seller for some color. If the colors of your yarn don't scream, is it really enough? Over at the vendor pavilion, we have a drop spindle demonstration in action. It was pretty crowded, but still very walkable. I managed to snag some dye and a larger foam stab pad for some felting. I missed a natural dye class, but here's a glimpse of a class on making your own enamel buttons. Lunch break, nothing says healthy like deep fried funnel cake. There was quite a selection of festivals, food, as well as our favorite maple-based snacks. Overlooking the festival grounds, we got to see the sheepdogs in action. Though I really couldn't hear what was being said, I could hear some of the whistles. And just imagine the shepherds saying, come by, come way, or is it come way and come by? It's been a long while since I took my Sheltie to a dog herding class. Look how excited those little guys are. I'm so short, so I had to hold the camera way above my head to get a clear shot of the masterful puppies in action. So sorry for the shaky shaky camera. Adjoining niche, the food area is a live band. Plenty of seating to kick it back some, get some shade, and relax a bit. To the right are two additional buildings. First, the Doge, I mean, 
Dodge Gilman building. Number 10 on the map. Stepping in, there's a large table full of an assortment of rowing cushions and needles. It's a free activity for all to enjoy and bring home their own felted crafts. People of all ages came together and stabbed away. Prices were very reasonable throughout the festival. Several family members who accompanied me on this trip were able to find some yarn as well as some niche roving for their limited budget. Right next to the live band and the Dodge Gilman building is building number nine, Floral Hall. There were so many bags of fleece, but don't forget to check the tag to see if it's for sale though, lest you fall in love with something that the breeder has already scored for themselves. Overall, the fleeces were really high quality. You can really see how the shepherds take pride in their flock with how well cared for each fleece that was submitted. The prices range from the low 30s to upper 150s. I wish you could touch this fleece. It won first place and yeah, look at that crimp. It felt like a cloud. Second place was also heavenly. Along the central wall here, we have bags of fleece that may have not won any ribbons, but look at that color. I love how this Icelandic fleece has that dark guard hair with the contrasting soft undercoat and white. Some people like to spin the guard hair with the undercoat, but I like to separate that out with some homemade wool combs. Purebred Icelandics have that wonderful characteristic of having a dual coat, so rather than buying multiple sheep for different projects, you have one breed to rule them all. Here's some beautiful locks of Gotland wool. I love how natural colored wool looks when integrated in, say, intarsia, knitted color work, or say, in woven into a grayscaled blanket. What do you like the most, a white sheep wool or do you prefer to taste the rainbow? Around the corner, in the same building, are some more demos, Q&As, and look at this fiber book. It lists the Vermont fire farms, includes the information of the breeds, samples knit up, yarn samples as well, of all the different colors they offer. There are two large catalogs of just Vermont farmers. Down this side of the building, we have some lovely folks helping people troubleshoot their craft as well as introduce younger people into the fiber art. I wasn't emotionally prepared for the amount of socializing, so by this point I was getting pretty Pretty exhausted and my brain stopped working. Oh, pretty. I love how they packed in so much here. There was a free drop spindle class where anyone could grab a spindle provided and a handful of roving and just join in. It was a lot of free flow going on. And that about covers the festival. It was super fun, a lot more socializing than I expected. There were loads of hands-on activities. I think the hardest part was trying to decide which activity or event to see and what to miss, as well as balancing everyone's needs and energy levels in our group. With that being said, thank you so much for joining me on this woolly adventure at the Vermont Sheep and Wool Festival. If you loved what you saw, don't forget the video a thumbs up and subscribe for more fiberfill content. And thank you for watching. I appreciate you. Until next year, may your wool be fluffy and your sheep adventures plentiful. Yeah, this is a special one.